In these films, we take time to sit with the artwork, resting comfortably in a chair, allowing body and mind to settle and relax into the painting. We absorb first impressions, colour, relationships, themes and content, and engage with the artist's technique and skill that guide us into contemplation of the piece. We notice how we feel. Building a more sensory relationship with the art piece, we can imagine ourselves into the painting. The dancers take the qualities and dynamics of the painting, heightened by the music, and find ways to express the impressions the paintings have inspired. The museum is a beautiful and inspiring space to dance in, an intimate stage shared with great works of art. Uniquely, individual responses are built into shared dances and deepen the enjoyment and understanding of the humanity of art. Welcome to the British Gallery at the Fitzwilliam Museum. We are in a corner of the gallery in front of three powerful and evocative paintings painted in 19th century England. An era of infamous intense industrialization, Victorian painting was made in a time of great social change. Alfred Elmore, the first of our artists, painted on the brink in 1865. He was painting at the height of Victorian fascination with morality tales. We look up at this young woman. It is evening, she is sat outside. Her clothes are rich, elegant and fashionable, but she seems a pallid ghost. Her capacious gown and cape prop her up as she flexes away from the room possibly seeking the solidity of a wall, possibly seeking solace in the darkness. Under the quiet moonlight, her clothes are blanched, pale, drained of colour, and deeply creased with shadows. Her face is partly obscured. What we see of her expression is tension and anguish. By contrast, through a window behind her, we can see a busy scene lit by glowing chandeliers and twinkling candles. A crowd of people lean over a table, as absorbed in their games as the woman in the foreground is in her sorrow. A tantalising glimpse of yet another room through an archway where more lights shine and people gather. The red wallpaper of the gaming room, the vast gilt mirrors, the rich and absorbed players, a paradise from which she has been cast out. An empty purse dangles limply from her right hand. A torn gaming card lies at her feet. We notice the shadowy young man. We sense his youth and his determination to persuade her. We can only guess at the words being murmured. He leans precariously away from the party. She leans away from him. The white lily symbolising purity is entwined with the passion flower, climbing vigorously, foregrounding passion. Throwing caution and good moral sense to the winds, this young woman has allowed herself to indulge in the vice of gambling and now faces the cruelty of fate. We are left to imagine what choice the young man is offering her, but the tension in her posture indicates there is little happiness or redemption in their conversation. The artist leaves the question brilliantly unresolved. His protagonist is truly on the brink. Her future, even her life, hangs in the balance. We move away from this claustrophobic scene to breathe in the fresh and brisk air of the English coastline. The Last of England was painted by Ford Maddox Brown in 1860. 
Let us begin quietly where sky, sea and land meet, taking time to absorb the foam-topped waves. We find ourselves in a boat, nudged in closely opposite to two figures who fill and dominate the painting. Painted in great detail, the artist has created a range of textures for our eyes to delight in. Woven shawl, wind-lifted pink silk ribbon, the heavy buttoned-up coat of the man. The wind is fierce and blows strong. Although the artist has painted this scene with a great deal of realism, he has also magically compressed the space around the two main figures. They hold our attention. Sheltered by a large umbrella, her hand clasps his tightly, while the fingers of his other hand brush against a little woolen boot. We see tiny fingers held in her hand. We can discern the swaddled shape under her red, checkered shawl. The couple are closely pressed against each other, albeit lost in their own reflections. The boat is busily packed with provisions, belongings and passengers, but the couple appear to have only one another and their baby for company. They are staring out of the painting, but not at us, the viewer. Their solemn gaze is fixed on unseen horizons. We recognise the perennial plight of the immigrant, the hope for survival and opportunity to create a new life. Our final painting keeps us by the sea. We step away from the pathos and drama of human relationships and we seem to step back in time. Samuel Palmer painted View of Lee, North Devon in 1834. As a young artist, he depicted the area as being like a paradise on earth, inspiring visionary ideals. This painting shimmers. The sea is iridescent and the landscape is bathed in soft light. Palmer has painted a naturalistic landscape which exudes peace and tranquility. There is little variation in the pale, cool colours of the sky as we drift down to meet the sea. We can just make out the horizon before dipping into the bright pale whites and soft grey blues of the sea. We reach the hilltop standing clear against the sea. Following the curves of the rolling hills, we delight in the delicate trees with their light, feathery canopy of leaves. At the base of the trees, we encounter our first humans, tiny in this landscape, but not unimportant. The artist has chosen a soft, muted palette of colours, mainly warm browns and yellows with highlights of creamy whites. The clothes of the two figures on the right-hand side have a little bit of colour, an earthy red and touch of blue, helping to draw our eye to them. Two figures on a pathway carrying a bundle of sticks on their head. Another figure walking down into the valley with a flock of sheep through woodland. In the fields, we can just make out another very small figure or two at work. They appear to be making haystacks. In the distance, we see a waft of smoke. We are invited to rest in the dream of these idyllic days, suggesting a contented rhythm of seasonal work and a sense of belonging and peace. The humans in this painting are attuned to a landscape belonging to a nostalgic reimagining of the olden days. We have experienced the tensions and complexities of emotional and moral dilemmas. We have lent into a tale of menace, of foreboding. We have delighted in the peace and quiet conjured by an ancient landscape. 
In this exquisite gallery space, the body dances the dynamics of these paintings. Thank you.